Hey out there in YouTube land, it's Frank from Cruising with Wheels. I bet you you want to know what's going on today. Well, let me tell you, it's another tale from the high seas. Welcome back. Now, this little story takes place on the NCL Gem in, on our trip through the Caribbean. And it's the story of these little eight-year-old mafia terrorists, as we call them affectionately, not. There was a group of boys, these little eight-year-old boys, and let me tell you, they were terrorizing everyone on the ship. I don't know who they were. I don't know who they belong to. I'm just saying, you know what? If I was their parent, I would beat them every day. And we inevitably would run into them. And you know, one day they're playing on the elevator, up and down, up and down, pushing all the buttons, causing havoc, havoc running out, going, <laughs> giggling like little foals. And then the next day, Kevin and I would be, uh, on the promenade uh, of shops and we went into one of them on the ship and we thought well let me see what they've got because you know we like to pick up the little NCL ship ornaments or maybe get, get a big one um, so uh, you know check out the t-shirts and sweatshirts you know just see what they might have and um, of course you know I'm probably over here looking at the candy you know but no, that's another story so we're in there and the little mafia terrorists come rolling in, you know, the gang of six. And they start just pulling all this merchandise off the shelves. Now, you know the crew. You know, if you've been on a cruise, uh, you know that the crew, you know, butter would melt in their mouth. I mean, they are so sweet and kind. And if you haven't been on a cruise, but you've been watching our videos, you know that that's how they are. I mean, you could, you know, literally you could walk up to them and whack them in the head and they'd be like, oh, thank you so much. I hope you enjoy your day. You know, that, that's, that's how they are. That's why they were hired. That's what their training is. And so these little terrorists are in there and they're just there to taunt the salespeople who are running the shop. So they're pulling all the t-shirts and all the stuff off the shelves and they're going, how much is this? And, you know, the lady's like, um, well, this is fourteen fifty, uh-huh. And they throw it down the shelf. And then they grab, like, an ornament. Well, what's this? What's this? How much is this? And this is five ninety nine, dollars Uh-huh. Whatever. That sounds like it's too much money. And they throw it back on the shelf. And we're watching all of this. Now, I, of course, am horrified, okay, because I come from uh, a almost 40 year background in retail, you know, where I started, you know, way back as a 17 year old child, I was a stock boy in a department store and I worked my way up going to college at night and getting into the buyer training program and becoming an, a, a trainee, a assistant buyer, a buyer and a branch store manager. I since went on to other companies to become uh, a district manager. Uh, for specialty stores, uh, big box discount chains. Uh, I got into drug stores with Rite Aid and CVS where I was a store manager for them and then went on to become uh, regional sales director for CVS where I ran their uh, uh, DSD programs for 105 stores in three states. You know, direct store delivery. I was in charge of all the vendors that delivered direct to the stores. Uh, anything that was not part of the warehouse but was a direct store delivery, I had to take care of. So I had 105 stores of 105 managers and all the vendors from Coca-Cola, Pepsi-Cola, Frito-Lay, you know, the bread vendors, the milk vendors, uh, oh God, all the beer vendors, you know, uh, anything that came in uh, the front door of the store, 
I was responsible for and had to deal with it. So, you know, it was a big job. So retail in my blood. My mom spent 30 years working in a department store until she finally retired. So big retail background. And this little display, uh, this annoyance and disrespect, oh my God, I wanted to grab every one of them by the back of their shirts and just slap the crap out of them and say, have you no manners? What is wrong with you? Where are your parents? Well, you know, you can't exactly do that to anybody, especially on a cruise ship. That'll probably get you kicked off. And Kevin, you know, he, he doesn't stand for anything. So while I'm there the, sitting in my wheelchair, biting my tongue, you know, Kevin is over there looking at them, you know, and not addressing them directly like, you little fools, I'm going to slap the crap out of you. Get out of here. You know, he's pretty much standing there going, as they're doing this, he would look at them and go, how rude, you know, and then go back to looking at what he was looking at. And they would be like, what? And the, you know, the salespeople there were as patient, uh, they had the patience of Job. I mean, really, uh, I commend them because uh, their training was really put to the test. Eventually, the little mafia terrorists um, left because, you know, kids and people like that, they do what they do because they want to see your reaction. The point of what they do is to get a rise out of you. And the more they do it and the more you get aggravated, the more they'll continue to do it because that's how they get their jollies. Well, of course, they met their match with the crew because every time they were rude and nasty and throwing merchandise all over, the crew's response was, oh, here you go. That is, you know, $6. Thank you. You know, and then they'd toss it and the shop lady would go and pick it up and fold it and put it back. So... There was no end game. There was no response that these little mafia terrorists were getting out of the shop people. So it was really, literally, a waste of their time. They were get, getting nothing out of it. So eventually they left. Oh, I so wanted to beat them. <gasps> if they were my kids, oh my God, with my three kids, uh, you know, I never hit my kids. All I had to do was give them the look. That was it. The look and it stopped whatever they were doing dead in their tracks. So these kids, you know, obviously the look wouldn't work, and if probably even if you beat them on their butts, that probably wouldn't work either. Though I'm pretty much assured that's what they needed is a good paddling on their behinds because somebody was letting uh, the inmates run the asylum at home, I'm sure, and these kids were probably spoiled rotten and got away with everything uh, they wanted to do. So, uh, great job, crew of the NCL Gem. Bad job, uh, parents of the little mafia eight-year-old terrorists. So, I wanted to tell you that little story and uh, hope that you don't run into them. And if you do, uh, you'll look at them and say, you're being rude. Go back to your little playpen, little eight-year-old mafia terrorist. Get out of here. Okay, so on behalf of Kevin and myself, I wanted to tell you that little story. Uh, don't forget to travel safe and cruise often, and we'll see you again for another episode coming soon from my Tales from the High Seas. Bye-bye now.